Geotech holographic sights. Cold firearms. I grabbed Jeff Hoffman from Black Hills Ammunition and Mike Guerra from Colt to answer a common question. Can I shoot a 5.56 cartridge in my 223 rifle? Generally speaking, if you have a rifle chamber for 5.56, you can shoot both 223 and 5.56 ammo in it. Absolutely correct. Okay. But if your rifle is chambered for 223, then you should shoot only ammo labeled 223 and not shoot 5.56 in it. That's, that's correct. Uh, SAMI, the Sporting Arms and Ammunition Manufacturers Institute, actually lists uh, shooting a 5.56 and a 223 rifle as an unsafe combination. Okay. And then, of course, now you've got something new here, a, a chambering where you can shoot both, but it's an accuracy chamber. That's correct, Tom. We have uh, the 223 wild chamber, and it's been really popular for three-gun competitions. And it's more like the 5.56 NATO chamber. It's got a little longer throat to it, so you're able to shoot both 5.56 and 223 commercial ammunition through it. Um, it's safe, it's accurate, and it works quite well. It's becoming very, very popular. With these hot Colt rifles on the bench, you know we had to reach out there. Yep, shooting the 223 at 600 yards in the wind. This is really stretching the 223, isn't it? This is starting to stretch it. Uh, uh, during the Vietnam era, the max effective range for an M16 was stated at 460 yards. So now we're, we're going to 600. Of course, we've got some advantages. We've got better ammo, longer, more aerodynamic bullets. Uh, that are less affected by wind. And you got a really accurate rifle here too. <laughs> yeah, we, we, uh, we've got a premium rifle. This this is not your 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 grandfather's M16. M16. No, I, I guess not. Let's go to the the right uh, the right hand of the two silhouettes. Okay. And now the trick here is elevation isn't going to be a problem. The wind is what's going to be the problem. Yep. Ready. Sending. There we go. There you go. Okay, I'll bring it in just a little bit. Send in. Just on the edge, I'll bring it in a little bit more. Right. That's pretty much... That's right where you want it, That's it? centered up a little bit, just a little bit low, but it's centered up for and that's one of the nice things about shooting a semi-auto out here. You can follow up shots, you can correct, see your shot, follow up, and walk it right in. The recoil's so light, even in 20 power, I can I can see my hits, I can see my, my impacts, as long as you've got a good solid rest and you're concentrating. Right. And that allows you to, if you can spot your own hits, that's a huge advantage. It really is. The differences in chamber dimensions is in thousandths of an inch. But those measurements are critical. What we have here, Tom, this is actually a test fire barrel that we wore out, and after it was worn out, we sectioned it to examine it. Yeah, but it makes a, a, a great illustrative aid. Sure. Uh, you've got the chamber at the rear, the barrel with the rifling in it, and a cartridge sitting in that chamber. And again, this is sectioned. And what stops that cartridge when it goes in is the shoulder, right? Correct. Uh, the, 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 that's what the headspace is on. And the primary difference between 223 and 556 is in the throat area. And effectively what that means is how much the bullet can jump and get to the rifling before it engages, before it hits the rifling. And, and that can affect the pressure levels if it hits the rifling very quickly versus if there's a free bore. Absolutely, that can cause a, that can cause a spike. If, it, if that bullet can't get a run at the rifling, it'll cause a spike in pressure right there while sure. it develops sufficient pressure to propel that bullet. Okay, so that's why we have the rules about using 223 and 556 chambers and all that. Absolutely. Okay, good deal.